Lesson 60 is on rate problems with a given total. We'll be applying what we learned in Lesson 57 about rate problems. Let's just think about a couple of things here. A rate problem involving time, it has three quantities that you need to consider. A rate, an amount of time, and a total. For example, if you were driving 60 miles per hour, you can think of that like a fraction, 60 miles in one hour. You would really probably see it like this, 60 mph, but you can think of that as a fraction, 60 miles in one hour. And you drove for two hours, you could multiply by two hours and get your total time or total miles that you drove. That would be 120 miles. If you drive 60 miles per hour for two hours, your total would be 120 miles. Now, there's three parts here. In a word problem, they have to give you two of those three parts, and then you can find the missing part. In these problems, they're going to give you the total plus one of the other parts, a rate or an amount of time. So think about what you would do here. Think about your multiplication and division facts. Think of a fact family. If you have the total on a multiplication problem like this and you don't know one of the factors, you can do division by the other factor to figure out your unknown quantity. Let's go ahead and do a practice problem. This one says, John can build three bicycles in one hour. How long will it take him to build 21 bicycles? Now, one thing that you can do to help you think about these problems is write down those three parts of a rate problem. Rate times time equals total. Underneath this, write down the things that you know and the missing part. The question here is, how long will it take him to build 21 bicycles? So think about that. What, what do we need to find out? What is our missing part here? It's the time. How long will it take him? The words give it away. And that's what you do in a word problem is you look for keywords in that problem to help you solve it. So you know what the rate is. Three bicycles in one hour. You don't know the time. So we'll just say T for time there. And you do know the total, 21 bicycles. So you can see there the division problem, 3 into 21, that would go into that 7 times. So the time equals 7, and we should say hours after that, 7 hours to build 21 bicycles. Use this formula or this equation whatever you want to call it, rate times time equals total. Use that. Every time you see a rate problem, write that down. Rate times time equals total. And know that in that word problem, they have to give you two of those three parts, either the rate and the time, the rate and the total, or the time and the total. They have to give you two of those three parts. Then you can solve for the missing part. You'll either use multiplication or division. In these problems in this lesson, they give you the total so you know that you'll have to do division every time. Any time they give you the total, you'll have a division problem in order to solve for the missing part. Let's do one more problem here. This one says the family hiked 15 miles in five hours. What was their average hiking rate? Okay, well, let's just think about this. We see a rate problem here. What is their average hiking rate? The word rate, that kind of gives it away. So let's just write down our formula rate times time equals total. Now let's just think about what we know in this problem. We know the total, the family hiked 15 miles, so we know the total distance. And we know that they took five hours to do that. We know the time. We don't know the rate. So we'll just say rate or r times 15 equal or r times 5 equals 15. Now, you can make a division problem out of these, or you can just think, well, what times 5 equals 15? 3 
times 5 equals 15. So the rate is equal to 3, and that would be miles per hour. 3 miles per hour was their average rate. So you don't have to turn that into a division problem. Usually you can just look at it and multiplication is easy enough to understand that that's 3 times 5. You don't have to do 15 divided by 5 in order to figure it out. This formula, though, is a very good idea. It'll help you think about where to put the numbers in that they've given you. Try to understand rate. Now, try to do it this way that I'm showing you by writing the rate times time equals total equation down because you'll be doing rate problems all the way up through high school. If you get them down now and try to understand them now, it's just going to make it that much easier in high school. Rate problems are very important in science, too. Remember, I've talked about it before that mathematics is considered the language of science. And science is a way that we can know God by studying his creation. So if you're good at mathematics, that will help you be good at science. And that will also help you know more about God's creation and hopefully know more about him and, and understand him better and have a better relationship with him. That's the most important thing you can do in a day is to try to improve your relationship with God and, and understand what he wants you to do with your life. So work hard on understanding these problems like this because they will help you ultimately know God better through a study of his creation. Okay, well that's all for lesson 60.